Jerry at Fair Oaks. It does all seem sort of mixed up, just like a detective story. Mm Mm-hmm. Corporal Dent started off kidding us yesterday, and here we end up with something really serious on our hands. You know, Lee, what what gets me is this. Why should the fellow who stayed in the shack come here to Fair Oaks? Harold's dad isn't here. Why should the fellow want to come anyplace where Harold's dad is? Well, we're sitting here asking each other questions that just haven't got answers. Well, they've got answers, all right. We just don't know what they are, yet. Yet? What do you mean? Well, look, Jerry, something's up. We know that. I've got a hunch that something's going to happen, and happen soon. And then we'll find out what the whole thing is about. But just remember this. The government's investigating that crash. Uh Uh-huh. And you think the fellow in the shack might have something to do with the investigation. Is that it? Yes, one way or the other. Oh, I get it. One way or the other, huh? You mean he's either with the government or... Or against it. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh Uh-huh. That means he's either for or against Harold's dad. Right. And maybe against Harold. Hmm. I think I get it. Come in. Cadet Linwell reporting for duty, gentlemen. Harold! Hi, Well, hi, you, Harold. Surprise. And how? Uh, come on in and sit down. Boy, you're a treat for our eyes. How's everything? Yeah, how's your dad? Tell us about it. Oh, wait a minute. I can't answer everything at once. Oh, sure. Take your time. I'm glad to be back. And have I got some swell news. All right, let's have it. <laughs> We're all ears. Well, I guess you know Dad's coming along okay. The doctor said he wasn't hurt as badly as they thought at first. Oh, gee, that's swell. He sure was lucky. Yeah, he was wearing one of those heavy flying suits. You know, all padded out with sheep wool. Oh, uh yeah. He was taking the bomber up for an altitude test, so he had to wear the heavy suit. The doctor said that was what saved him from getting hurt worse. Boy, that sure is swell news. And are we glad. I'll say, that's really great news, Harold. Yeah, that is. But it isn't what I had to tell you. What? More good news? You bet. Listen, the doctors say that in about a week, maybe a little more, maybe less, Dad'll be able to come here for a rest. Come here? To, to Fair Oaks? Why, why, sure. Aren't you glad to hear it? Oh, you bet we are. Uh, how about it, Jerry? Well, sure. Why, we didn't say anything right away because we were so uh, surprised. That's right, isn't it, Lee? Uh, yeah, sure. He's coming here for a rest, huh, Harold? Yeah. The doctor said it'll be the best thing in the world for him. Rest and quiet. Rest and quiet, uh-huh. Gee, uh... I can hardly wait to meet him. You've talked so much about him that, well, we feel like we know him already. Oh, yeah, you bet. Yeah, I hope you like him. Like him? Hey, listen to this fellow, Lee. <laughs> he hopes we'll like the best test pilot in the country. Why, we ought to get out a special parade when he gets here. <laughs> I'd like to, but Dad doesn't like that sort of stuff. He, he likes it quiet. <laughs> he likes it quiet. After testing planes, he wants it quiet. Oh, I mean, he doesn't like a fuss made over him. Why, the second day he was in the hospital, he was kicking to get out. Uh... Harold, did they ask him any questions? Questions? Oh, sure, they asked him questions. They always do when a ship cracks up, but this one is a little different. Nobody said much about it, but I could tell something was in the air. A lot of men in uniforms. War was round. Oh. Gee, a lot of company today. Come in. And John. At ease, men. <clears throat> well, Harold, you didn't waste much time seeing your friends, did you? No, sir. Sit down, men. Thank you, Captain Gardner. Oh, Harold, I wonder if you'd mind doing a little favor for me. I'd be glad to, sir. Mrs. Gardner's over in Custis Hall. Please tell her that I'll join her there in just a few minutes. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
See you later, fellas. Yeah, okay, okay Harold. So long. You men think a lot of Harold, don't you? Well, I'll say we do, sir. Yes, sir. Then I'm sure you wouldn't mind uh, doing him a favor. Anything we can, sir. Good. Now, Corporal Dentist told Major Davis of your experience yesterday on Woodman's Island about the situation in the old shack. Yes, sir. Major Davis is worried about Harold. Of course, this whole thing may mean nothing, but then again, it may concern Harold and his father very much. Well, that's what we figured, sir. I thought you would. Now, here's the idea. Major Davis wants to keep Harold within the bounds of the school, but, and this is important, men, he doesn't want Harold to know he's doing it. I, I don't think I understand, sir. Why does Major Davis want to do that? As a precautionary measure. That is, he wants to make sure that nothing can happen to Harold. Then this thing is serious, sir. Jerry, we don't know, but until we do know, we're not going to take any chances. And we don't want to excite or worry Harold. He's just had a trying time about his father. Yes, sir, I see now. Someone must always be with Harold, uh, within the quad, where we can always keep an eye on him. Gee, that won't be easy to do, keep him within the quad, I mean. I know that, and Major Davis knows it. We thought that perhaps you two men, being Harold's best friends here among the cadets, could think of something. Think you can do it? We'll try, sir. Good. Of course, it may mean uh, staying within bounds yourselves, missing a little fun now and then. Well, if it's going to help Harold, I, I guess we wouldn't care. That's fine, Jerry. Major Davis thought we could depend upon you two, and he wasn't wrong. Now, I... Well, that must be Harold again. Yes, sir. Uh, remember now, he mustn't know. We get it, sir. Uh, come in. I met Mrs. Gardner right outside, sir. She's going to wait there for you. All right, Harold. Thank you very much. I mustn't keep her waiting now. See you later, men. Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. Uh, well, uh, uh... Say, what do you say we go over to Mac's place? Mac's place? Okay, I could use a bottle of pop. But that's out of bounds. I, I mean, out of the quad. What's the difference? Recall hasn't sounded yet. Well, all right, let's go. Oh, Harold, uh, Lee and I'll come right after you. We have to straighten up a little. Okay, I'll be walking down the hall. Hey, what's the idea, Lee? Max Place is out of the quad. I know, so we're going to keep Harold and Max Place until after recall, so he'll be kept within bounds. Oh, how? Well, that's something for us to figure out. Hey, come on, if we stay here too long, they'll get suspicious. Say, I want to stop and cut this wall. There might be some mail for me. Oh, okay. I'll run on ahead. Uh, we'll meet you in Max Place. Okay. Where's the fire, Jerry? Huh, I'm looking for it, Ed. Oh, oh, Captain Gardner. What's the matter? Why are you running? Well, this this is part of our plan to keep Harold within the quad. Oh, then you've thought of something. Yes, sir. I, I think we have. <laughs> That's quick work, but remember, Harold mustn't suspect a thing. Oh, he won't, sir. All right, carry on, Cadet Dugan. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. My conscience. <laughs> hey, Mac. Mac. Oh, 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 Jerry, you, you came in like the wind off the moors of Scotland. What's chasing you, lad? Nothing. Listen, Mac, let me talk. Uh, you just listen. Uh, go ahead, whatever it is. It's got you excited enough. Mac, Harold's coming here in a minute. Huh? we got to keep him here until after recall. Well, uh, Raddy, what's eating of your loss? He'll be getting demerits for it, on top of all the trouble about his dad. Uh, Mac, I'll explain later. Honest, I will. But you got to believe me now that it's for Harold's good. I'm under orders to do it. Orders? Oh, well, all right, Jerry. Orders it is, then. But uh, what will I do? Uh, you have your reasons, and until I know them, I'll do my part. Quick, uh, you got to think of some way to keep Harold here until after recall. Uh, uh, oh, oh, the clock, lad. The clock. Uh, we'll turn it back a half hour. Us well. But he could hear recall from here. Well, in, in the back room, he won't hear. I'll talk loud, and you will, too. Ah, Mac, you're a pal. That's thinking things up fast. <laughs> when old Mac sets his brain, it moves fast. Oh, oh Losh, here comes Lee and Harold. Well, uh, quick, uh, the clock, set it back. Uh, 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 there it is. Half hour or so. Phew. Uh, now talk about something else. Uh, uh, it, it's good. Uh, it's good to know the riding team is coming along fine, Jerry. Yeah. Well, you see, we we've been working. Well, for well, well. If it isn't Harold, Losh lad, I'm glad to see you back. And your father, how is he? Oh, he's swell. He might come here in about a week. Oh, now won't that be fine? Uh, and you'll be bringing him in to see old Mac, won't you? Oh, I'll say you will, Mac. <laughs> a trip to Fair Oaks isn't complete without seeing the ice cream parlor and general store of Mr. William McLeod. Oh, no, uh, no, no, Jerry. None of your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I, I guess this calls for another treat. Another one? Well, don't it? <laughs> You're the boss, Mac. Uh, Harold, what will you have? I'll have... Hey, is that clock right? Uh, oh, 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 the clock. Oh, uh, I, I, why, it was right this morning. Say, Mac, how are you coming along with your chemistry? Oh, the, chem- uh, oh, the chemistry... Oh, well, listen, lads, if, you, if you'll come into the back room, I'll, I'll show you the whole outfit. A regular laboratory set up there. Uh, come on, come on. Well, well, well I've been waiting to see this for a long time. All right. Now, well, there you are. Gee, this is key, Mac. Uh, what are you inventing? Oh, nothing yet, Jerry, but I will, I will. Uh, say, what are you yelling like this for? Jerry, no, I... I... Nobody's yelling, Harold. Oh, excuse me a minute. I want to get something in the front of the store. All right, please. Uh, what's this thing, Mac? That, oh, that's a graduate glass, Harold, and this is a, a retort for heating things up again. Well, everything's all right. You mean... Uh, I do. Oh, Lord, I was yelling so loud. Why? Oh, uh, uh, just kidding, you know. <laughs> Say, I'm worried. Isn't it about time for recall? It should be. It's past time. I'm going to look at my watch. Well, you saw what Max uh, clock yeah, said. I, uh... Yeah, but, but look at my watch. Why, it's five minutes past recall. We'll all catch it. Come on. That's right. Uh, come on, Jerry. Uh, you better hurry, lads. You better hurry. My first day back, and I'm out of bounds at recall. You know what they'll do. Probably keep us within the quad. Yeah, they might do that. Come on. Not a soul in sight. Say, maybe we can make it back before anyone sees us. Hey, there's Carl Lockhart. He's officer of the day. We'll wait till he gets past. Uh, 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 hiya, Carl. Holy smoke, are you crazy? Calling him. He could have got by with, without getting caught. Now he sees us. You men, come here. Uh, yes, sir. What did you call me, Dugan? I, I meant to call you Captain Lockhart. I suppose all three of you know you're out of bounds at recall? Oh, yes, sir. We know it, don't we, Lee? Uh, uh-huh. What's the matter with you men? Have you lost your mind? <laughs> it looks like it. What? What is this? Linwell. Yes, sir. What's this all about? Uh, I, I guess we are out of bounds, sir. You guess? And not only that, but all three of you failed to salute. You seem happy about being caught. Yes, sir. Oh, I give up. But you know what this is going to mean. Demerits and kept within the quad for an indefinite period until you can learn to be in bounds at recall. Yes, sir. All right, report to Captain Bogart. Tell him you're out of bounds, you failed to salute, and tell him also that all three of you acted almost insolent towards an officer. And do it right away. Yes, sir, you bet. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Oh, I give up. Go on, report to Captain Bogart. <laughs> We're on our way, sir. <laughs> Gee, we could have slipped by easy. We wouldn't have been caught if you hadn't have called him, Jerry. Boy, are you dumb. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> Am I dumb? <laughs>